Dim and limited hunter chapter of the Grand Festival the Astria family was currently formed through the union of the sword Saint Gerald and the genius wizard Historia, however, their story did not start with a beautiful tale of pure love, rather, it was a story of a grips, struggle of lust, desire, and war to determine which woman would claim Gerald Asher Aaron, Gerald Astria, the head of the Astria family, was once a notorious womanizer, a man of status and fame who always had a woman by his side, a true Casanova, Historia was one of the women who loved Gerald, and she somehow managed to capture his heart and drive the other women away. Yet, it did not change Gerald's past or his lascivious nature, which coveted every beautiful woman he laid his eyes upon, Merlin Astria despised her father for it, considering his status, it wouldn't have been unusual for him to have several concubines, but Merlin could never forgive him for being physically involved with other women while still married to her mother, moreover, Historia only seemed to have resigned herself to the situation and told her husband to exercise self-restraint, to Merlin, it was frustrating that her mother simply gave up and let things slide solely because she was the legitimate wife, therefore, Merlin longed for a love that was pure and beautiful, like a flower, not one that was mired in lust like mud. However, as she focused solely on her swordsmanship, graduated from the academy, and joined the imperial knights hearing lustful conversations of men made her idealistic hopes for pure love seem more like a distant dream, is it that hard to find true love? Having never had romantic feelings for anyone even after becoming a knight, the concept of pure love became something Mullen could only yearn for, that was why Isaac and Lucy's relationship at the academy, full of youthful innocence, seemed so beautiful to Merlin. She believed they embodied the pure love she had dreamed had only ever dreamed of. Moreover, Merlin was secretly happy that such a person was White's mentor. However, why would you show such a sight? Sir Isaac after seeing Isaac and Dorothy spend time together like young lovers during the grand festival preparations, Merlin wished to deny reality. In the end, was Isaac no different from her despicable father, Gerald Estre, a man who hid his lascivious nature behind a kind feckhead? No, that was a rude thought, there could be misunderstandings Merlin hadn't been made aware of. Yet, she couldn't help but be wary, Isaac was a good-looking man with a gentle personality, it wasn't surprising that Snow White, who was a teenager and didn't care about social status, might have a crush on him. That was why Merlin was secretly wary of Isaac. Even though their relationship was limited to teaching the basics of sky combat and swordsmanship, she had grown fond of him during the time they spent together. Whether or not Isaac was attracted to women was a separate issue. Merlin's chilly demeanor was understandable. No matter how close White and I were, the extreme difference in our social statuses couldn't be ignored, and the act of leading her by the wrist was problematic in and of itself. Even if I was an escort knight, I would have been cautious of someone like me. I did it only because I trusted White, but if it had been any other princesses, by now we would be deeply discussing whether or not to cut off my rest. The situation could have escalated uncontrollably, and she saw it. Merlin thought that Luce and I were in an intimate kind of relationship. After accidentally seeing me with Dorothy during the grand festival preparations, she seemed confused. I could tell by reading her psychology, she thought I was possibly a womanizer and was wary of my physical contact with White, I wasn't too affected, it was nothing new, I felt boundless affection for my favorite characters, what Merlin thought of my actions of showering them with affection hardly mattered, I'm sorry, White, White let out a muffled ah, uh. when I let go of her hand however, Merlin continued to glare at me, she was so wary, White was flustered by the unexpected tense atmosphere, she forced a smile and waved her hands quickly enough to leave an afterimage. No, no, don't be sorry. I was so happy that Isaac brought me here, also, um, Merlin, Merlin had no intention of making White uncomfortable, she reluctantly bowed her head once and stood next to White, without another word, we all walked out of the stadium, White seemed flustered by the subdued atmosphere, even after lunch. Merlin Estria kept a close watch on me, whenever I tried to make even the slightest bit of physical contact with White, she would intervene and stop me, not knowing what sweet words might pop out. I also paid attention to my words and actions. This is getting uncomfortable, 
at least now her worriness had tired down, perhaps it was because passers-by were admiring White's beauty, and she was internally growling at them as a bunch of fawny people today. White's beauty was even more radiant than usual as she was fully dressed up as the face of the first year of the magic department, Princess White, your dress act. Suddenly, the sound of fabric tearing resounded from behind White, it seemed that even with her slender body, the tautly pulled fabric couldn't take it anymore. Ah, <sighs> White scrambled to her feet, trying to look at her back, Merlin took out a thin coat from her magic pouch and draped it over White's shoulders. Oh, thank you, Merlin's senior Isaac. Do you mind if we go to the dressing room? Let's go. We made our way to Orphan Hall. As soon as we entered, we noticed the graduate student, Marco, hunched over and trudging along. The dark circles under his eyes suggested he had been up for several nights. I wondered why he was so busy even though it was time for the grand festival. It was regrettable, but it was unavoidable since he was a graduate student. We passed by him. White, Merlin, and I went up to the first year floor and entered the dressing room, a space prepared for use during their grand festival. The spare clothes are here, Merlin, could you help me get dressed? Sure. White took a set of clothes hanging on the rack and went behind the blackout curtains with Merlin. White stuck her head out and looked at me. These clothes are difficult to put on by myself, Senior Isaac. I'm sorry, but could you wait a bit? I nodded and leaned against the wall. While I waited, I decided to concentrate on circulating mana in my magic tool. Sounds of fabric brushing against skin came from behind the curtain. White groaning out indicated that the pretty clothes were difficult to take off. It seemed even Merlin was struggling to help her change. It was going to take some time. By the way, Senior Isaac, and just then, White spoke from beyond the curtain, like it was the right moment to bring up a conversation that would be difficult to have face it to face. It was clear what she was about to discuss. It's due tomorrow. Ah, oh, yeah, we're bright. It's tomorrow. Of course, I remembered. I beat her to it. White had been concerned about it all along. Her excited voice came through. The due date of the debt overlapped with the grand festival. White had only earned enough Jill to get by and had not yet paid off her debt. It was also unlikely she'd be able to fully repay it by tomorrow. Even if she did well during the grand festival and won a prize, the due date of her debt would come first before the end of the festival, and she knew what would happen if she failed to repay the debt. To White, I was a resolute person, while usually kind and gentle. I could also seem cold-blooded, capable of cutting ties easily, even though I didn't see myself that way at all. What are you going to do? I, I can pay it back. He'll definitely pay it back tomorrow. How? I already knew she was thinking of taking a loan from the Academy Bank. White was still a low-ranked student. In other words, she could only choose a high-interest loan at the unreasonable Academy Bank. She wouldn't be able to manage the scarcity interest. Excessive debt was a shortcut to expulsion, especially for a low-ranked student like White. Debt adjustment. Holding on. Such things would not even be considered even though there was a possibility that she would be given special treatment for being a princess, it was doubtful that White, who hated being indebted, would readily accept it. I was about to suggest that she sell some of her valuable training tools, but I stopped. Doing so would blur White's resolution to become stronger, even if it meant becoming a debtor. Anyway, I just wanted to say don't worry, I can pay it back. I have a way, she was basically saying don't prepare your heart to leave my side. Since she was absolutely terrified to see someone abandon her, she was so pure, I somehow felt guilty. I only mentioned the due date because I wanted White to do her best, of course, it'd be by her side, and I had to anyway, considering what was to come, don't borrow gel from somewhere else, you won't be able to handle it. Oh, so that can't be, you're talking nonsense, I wasn't thinking about digging myself into debt. How could a low-ranked student like me get a high-interest loan from the Academy Bank? I didn't even mention the loan, you fool. Now that the due date was near, it might be okay to talk honestly. I had no intention of leaving, and I didn't care whether she paid it off or not. Would physical labor be okay? By now, 
White should have at least reached the minimum threshold for what I wanted her to do. I might end up making her do tough tasks like an aerobic exercises, but she would understand later that it was for the future. There was no better pretext than paying off the debt. There was also a good purpose for both of us to become stronger together. It was truly a win-win situation. After a brief pause, I brought up the conversation. You don't have to pay it back with gel. There are many ways to take responsibility. If not gel, there's physical swing, the curtains flung open, and the escort knight with a green ponytail, Merlin, popped out. Why did she come out? I was flustered. White's surprised voice came from inside the curtain, Merlin. But Merlin ignored her and quickly walked towards me. A chill ran down my spine at her eerie gaze. What the hell? She's terrifying, Merlin. Where are you going? And my clothes, excuse me for a moment, Gran. Gran, stay with Princess White. Report to me immediately if anything happens. Merlin grabbed my wrist and dragged me to a corner of the dressing room. Her brown falcon familiar, Gran, was summoned into the air and flew beside White, closing the curtains with its beak, thud. Merlin then pushed me into a corner and forcefully placed her hand next to my head against the wall. Here, Merlin exhaled deeply, her head hanging low. She seemed to be having a hard time, drumming her fingers. Should I pretend to be perplexed, Merlin? What's going on all of a sudden, Sir Isaac? I also feel very burdened by the debt Princess White owes you. This must also be a social experience that Princess White must overcome. Merlin clicked her tongue with a sorrowful expression. But indeed you are just the same as other males. My suspicions weren't wrong. I had developed some affection for you given you were teaching Princess White well and even taught her basic weapon skills. What are you talking about? Don't feign ignorance. Merlin suddenly lifted her head and was about to shout, but she lowered her voice quickly, suggesting to pay off her debt with something physical. That's clearly something indecent. She cut off my words to suit her own interpretation. Even you cannot tolerate using Princess White's kindness and sense of responsibility to satisfy your own selfish desires. Merlin, White was still behind the curtain, looking desperately for her escort knight and calling out after seeing me with Dorothy during the festival preparations. Merlin's perception of me drastically changed. The pure-hearted Isaac in her mind transformed into a lascivious Isaac. The gap between these two perceptions couldn't be wider. Because of this, Merlin had even considered the possibility that I might make an indecent proposition if White failed to pay off her debt, and upon hearing my words, she immediately assumed her suspicions were correct and confronted me. It was a ridiculous misunderstanding. I might be a harem lover, but I was certainly not a beast who had been preying on White's innocence, and now, it seemed Merlin hastily jumped to a conclusion and pushed her misunderstanding onto me, which didn't sit well with me at all. I narrowed my eyes and spoke with a sharp tone. I don't know what you're talking about, so are you going to pay me back tomorrow? That's why it was determined to take responsibility for her own actions. If Merlin were to pay it all off, it would be an insult to White's hard work and commitment. Merlin knew that better than anyone. Actually, it was doubtful that Merlin could pay it back in the first place. Merlin, what's going on there? I can't wear this dress by myself. Merlin did not respond despite White's pleading voice. She just locked eyes with me. I observed her reaction, curious how she would respond given her haste to condemn me based on her misunderstandings. I intended to clear up the misunderstanding, but I was intrigued. Merlin avoided my gaze and continued with an exasperated look on her face. Would it be possible to extend the due date or forgive the debt? And um, it seemed that she was willing to negotiate in a way that wouldn't undermine White's resolve. Oh well, why should I? I'm an outsider so I can't use gel, but I can, just a little let you touch me. Merlin knew how attractive she was during her years at the Academy and the Knight Order. I hadn't expected her to go this far, though. Is she suggesting that she will tolerate me touching her body? She must think that all men would be tempted by such an offer. Merlin hung her head again, trying to hide her flushed face, to go to such lengths. Ha! I let out a heavy sigh. Merlin glanced at me with a sharp look in her eyes. I'm not interested in your body, Merlin. What? Her gaze turned lethal. Oh, I may have misspoken, 
I quickly corrected myself. I think there's been a misunderstanding. I was going to have White help me with mana circulation. It's tough but beneficial for both of us so I thought of it as a way to settle the debt. What? Merlin looked flustered. I never had inappropriate thoughts towards White. I've been seeing and teaching her every day for a while now, and I've grown fond of you Merlin I didn't realize you thought of me that way. Sir Isaac, him a little disappointed. I deliberately looked down, looking sorrowful, which made Merlin break out in a cold sweat. She seemed troubled about what to say next. Clearly overwhelmed, I continued, seizing the momentum. And why would you say something like that? Do you think your body wouldn't be defiled? No, that's not don't ever bring up anything like that in front of me again. Even if your role is to protect white with your life, that doesn't diminish your worth. I lectured her like a teacher instructing a child. Perhaps it'd become accustomed to this manner of speaking from teaching white. Merlin, her face filled with shock and confusion, trembled violently. I gently lowered the arm she had propped against the wall. It swung limply in the air, unexpectedly. It seems I have incurred a moral debt. Merlin was now feeling obliged to apologize and make amends. This might be a good time to lighten the mood. Okay, Merlin, yes. Her response was lifeless. That should be enough. I immediately softened my expression to a gentle smile. All right, let's forget this ever happened. White seems to be in a bind. You should go check on her. Merlin, I'm sorry, Sir Isaac. I don't know if this is alright but it'll give you the opportunity to slit my throat someday you didn't see the need for such an opportunity. I smiled awkwardly and reassured her that it was fine and there was no need for such harsh reflection. Merlin let out a sad sigh. Merlin turned and went behind the curtain then an apologetic voice came from inside the curtain. Princess White, I have committed a grave offence Merlin. What's wrong? There was a lot of back and forth behind the curtain. Merlin glossed over our recent conversation and quickly concluded her reflection. Let us now commence the highlight of the giblum. Let the arc ball race begin. The voice of the announcer echoed through Muchen Academy. The arc ball race began.